U.S. and China reinitiate military high-level communication, expert analysis. Recently, formal communication between high-ranking military officials of the United States and China, interrupted for over a year, has been resumed. However, experts believe that this is merely a tactical adjustment by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, in response to international containment efforts and to slow down economic decoupling. On December 21, General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the U.S., had a video call with General Li Zuicheng, chief of the Joint Staff Department of the Central Military Commission of the CCP. A statement from Milley's office, as conveyed by spokesperson Doherty, mentioned that they discussed the importance of working together to manage competition, avoid miscalculations, and establish communication channels. This marks the first high-level military communication between the U.S. and China since August of the previous year when the CCP announced the suspension of all military communication following the visit of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan. The resumption of military contacts was agreed upon during the U.S.-China summit in San Francisco. Some high-ranking officials and military leaders in the U.S. view this as an important first step to prevent misunderstandings or miscalculations during encounters between the two militaries. However, experts see the restoration of high-level military communication as a strategic move by the CCP for self-preservation. Su Ziyun, director of the Institute of Defense Strategy and Resources at Taiwan's National Defense University, expressed his observation, stating that the resumption of military talks by China is a tactical adjustment. The primary reasons include Beijing's perception of increased containment efforts by neighboring countries and the need to address internal economic issues resulting from the slowdown in economic decoupling. However, there is skepticism about the efficacy of high-level U.S.-China military communication. Su Ziyun suggests that in the broader context of U.S.-China relations, this may serve as a break to avoid direct collisions in the short term but is unlikely to bring significant changes in the long-term strategic structure. Since 1997, when the U.S. and China entered into what was called an economic cooperation partnership, the relationship has transformed into a highly competitive one. A Pentagon report noted that from fall 2021 to 2023, the Chinese military conducted over 180 instances of coercive and dangerous aerial interceptions against U.S. military aircraft in the South China Sea. Recent incidents involve risky interceptions by the Chinese military against U.S. and allied aircraft and vessels. Some analysts argue that the vast disparity in military capabilities prevents the CCP from directly confronting the U.S., and the resumption of military talks is seen as a way to avoid accidental conflicts. While Washington views military dialogue as a means to reduce tension and enhance security, Beijing sees it as a tool for tactical control. Su Ziyun said, I think the United States' attitude is to prepare for the worst but still maintain room for dialogue. Essentially, Washington sees military dialogue as a means of easing tension or ensuring security to prevent the occurrence of unexpected conflicts. However, Beijing views dialogue as a tool for regulation. The culture of the Chinese Communist Party is to engage in both talks and fights, fight and talk, refraining from dialogue when the situation is favorable and expressing a willingness to talk when the situation is unfavorable. Su Ziyun stated, in this context, the future military relationship between the United States and China involves two main aspects. Firstly, it is about restraining the rapid growth of the Chinese Communist Party's military power. Secondly, through technological management, democratic nations can acquire more advanced and sophisticated equipment. If the advantage in military capabilities is more firmly established, it can serve as a deterrent against war. Therefore, this represents a comprehensive strategic consideration. Su Ziyun analyzes that, in the overall situation, the United States is not approaching the relationship with China based on economic interests or geopolitical considerations. Instead, it is focused on containment of the Chinese Communist Party's anti-human rights and anti-democratic system.